Hello, welcome to another episode in the RPG and Go tutorial series. Today, we're going to be implementing a camera. Up until now, we have added this player with some enemies and a potion, and we have a little map loaded, but we don't have any uh, following functionality. So when I approach the edge of the map here, uh, we just go off screen. We don't have any camera that's following us around. And that's pretty essential, especially if we want to have an RPG map with you know lots of buildings and places to go and quests to go on. So we need to get that implemented ASAP. But before we implement the camera, I want to do a bit of code refactoring. So if you're following along with the series, maybe this could be useful for you. But if you just want to learn about how cameras work, then go ahead and skip to the timestamp in the description. So over the course of the series, we've been implementing things a little bit quickly, and I've been kind of just sticking things in the main file. So we have our sprite, our player, our enemy, and our potion, all of them in this main file. The main file is the entry point of the application, and it's my personal preference that it's not too cluttered. So I think it'd be better and more scalable if we make a dedicated folder to all of our different entity types and work from there. So I'm going to go ahead and go and create a new folder here. And I'm going to call it entities. And inside of there, I'm going to create uh, four files. So I'm going to create a sprite.go file that's going to contain our sprite. I'm going to create a player one as well. I'm going to create an enemy one. So enemy.go here. And then I'm going to create a potion one here. Now they are called generic names like potion and enemy. And we're going to have multiple different enemy types. Um, as of right now, I think I'm just going to put all of my enemies inside the enemy.go file and all my potions inside the potion.go file, but it still gives you a general way to categorize things uh, pretty well. Um, the player gets its own file because the player is very important. So yeah, let's go ahead and move all that stuff over. So I'm just going to uh, cut the sprite out here, go into sprite.go, um, make sure that you uh, specify the package that you're in, which you are no longer in the main package. You are now inside of the entities package because we're inside of a subfolder. So package entities there and paste that struct in there and we can save it it to get that error going away. It did not find Ebiten v2 right away, so tack on that v2 to the end of that import statement and you should be good to go. Now let's just go ahead and repeat that for the others. So cut, package entities, go into main, enemies, package entities, paste, main, potion, cut, package entities, paste, save it again and we should be good to go here okay so now that we have put them in their own package we now have to inside of the game struct we have to specify that they are inside of the entities package so basically prefix anytime you define those types enemy uh, player potion or sprite prefix them with entities dot and you should be good so entities dot enemy and then entities dot potion and then we have some more errors probably um, closer to the bottom here so yeah we have quite a bit of uh, additional things to do here but once we have it done it'll be okay and there is one more thing to, to note the enemies use unkeyed fields so whenever we are passing in those values we need to say uh, sprite colon and then follows player colon so that it can map the different key values that we're using earlier so basically whenever we're creating an enemy we are passing in the sprite and the follows player boolean we need to explicitly say you know sprite and follows player here and then here we need to do again sprite and follows player same thing with potions so just say sprite and then we need to do the amount heal Okay, so finally we have all of our refactoring done and the code's linked in the description if you don't really want to do all that yourself. Um, let's go ahead and actually get to the topic of this video and implement that camera. So if we want to implement a camera in our game, then we're going to have to understand how a camera works in a 2D game like this. The first thing to send home is that there is no such thing as a camera in this context. There is no actual camera in your game pointing at things. We have to use math to create the illusion that we are following a target. So let's go ahead and define what we need to know for a camera. We need to have a target, we need to know that target's position, and we need to know the screen size so we can center it properly. So now I have a question. How do we make it look like an object is standing still even if it's moving? Whenever we're implementing a camera like this and we want to make it look like our player is always in the center, it's not moving, it's always in the center and everything else is moving, what we need to do is we need to directly reverse its position. So if the player has moved 100 pixels to the right, we move it back 100 pixels to the left. That will keep the player in the same position no matter where it is. That is the ideal functionality we want for a top-down camera like this. So what we need to keep track of is we need to keep track of the player's position and we need to keep track of the screen width and screen height so we can properly offset it so that the player is in the middle. So now that we've defined what we need for a camera, let's go ahead and create one. So I'm going to create a new file and call it camera. 
camera.go and I'm going to put it inside of my main package for now and I'll just create a new struct for this so I'll say like type uh, camera struct and what's the camera gonna have uh, it's gonna have you know an X and a Y and I'm just gonna make them float 64s because that's what Ebbets engine likes and let's go ahead and just create a function to make a camera easily so I'm gonna say funk new camera and I'll say like uh, X Y for initial positions here and then we will return a camera object so then we can do return camera here and I'll say X is X and Y is Y. Okay, so now let's go ahead and implement the functionality that we want. We want to follow a target. So I'm gonna say function, I'm gonna create a method for camera. So see camera here. And this method is going to be just called, I guess, like follow target. Now again, what do we need for this? Uh, we need the uh, target X, so target X, and we need targets, so the target Y position, and we need the screen within screen height. So we need the screen width and the screen height. Um, so we can just make all of these float 64s for simplicity's sake, and now we can actually do our calculations. So remember, the camera's position is going to be the reverse of the of the player's position with an added offset to center it on the screen. So the way we can do that is we can just say c.x, and we're just going to say it's equal to the negative target.x, and we're going to add on the screen width divided by 2. For, this, for the y, it's going to be a similar thing, so c.y equals the negative target.y, and we're going to add on half of the screen height divided by 2. Okay, so now that we have our follow target method done, we can go ahead and go to the main.go file, and we can add a camera to our game. So I'm going to go up to my game struct here, and I'm going to add a new entry. I'm going to call it my camera of type camera. Now we can go to our constructor here, and I'm going to, at the bottom here, I'm going to say camera equals a new camera object. And for the initial position and the initial Y position, I'm just going to say 0, 0, because I don't really know where I'd want it anyways. So now, in order for our camera to constantly follow the player, we need to be constantly giving it the information of the player. Let's go ahead and go into our update method here, and let's add, uh, you know, game dot camera dot follow target. And now what we need is we need the uh, player's x and the player's y and the screen width and screen height. Now we could save these as variables, but for simplicity purposes of right now, I'm just going to pass in those values that are given in the layout here. So we have 320 and 240. So I'm I'm going to go into here and I'm going to just say like 320 and 240 here. Now we have to actually apply this camera's translation to sort of reverse the player's positioning whenever we are drawing all of our sprites. This includes the tiles as well, by the way, so that they actually move along with the world as well. So right after we actually translate the sprite or the tile, what we can do is we can just add a second one here and say ops.geom.translate and we can then do uh, cam or g.cam.x and g.cam.y. And we can just copy this line and paste it before we draw all of them. So including the player, we paste it there, um, and I'm just going to move it over there. And let's go to where we're drawing our enemies and paste the exact same line there. So paste that there, and then go to the potions and paste that line there as well. Now we can run our code again. And you'll see that the player is centered on the screen, but with a bit of a catch, it's actually slightly off. And as you can see, you can maybe see that it is basically like a few pixels to the right and a few pixels down. And that's because the X and the Y position of the player are at the top left. So the top left of the sprite is the origin. So actually this corner right here is the center of the screen, but we want it so that the center of our sprite is the center of our camera here. In order to change that, we can simply apply an offset to the X and the Y that we pass in for our follow target before we pass them in. I know that our tile size is 16, so I'm going to add eight to all of these to move that you know pointer from the top left of the sprite to the middle of the sprite. Now, if we rerun this, we'll see that the sprite is now in the center of the screen. Cool stuff. Now we are having an issue. So our tile map ends here. This is the zero zero coordinate of our tile map. Uh, but we want it so that whenever we get to the edge of our tile map, we want it to stop. You know how in a lot of these top down games, when you reach a border of a world, the camera stops following the player and we sort of just run, run up until the end of it. We want that kind of functionality here. So let's go ahead and apply constraints to our camera. So in order to restrict our camera to only be showing the uh, tile map here and not be able to go out of the tile map, we're going to add a new method here. See camera. 
and I'm going to call this method constrain here. And this method is going to need to take in four things. The first two are going to be the tile map width and height in pixels. And the second two are going to be the screen width and screen height in pixels. So I'll say tile map width in pixels here and the tile map height in pixels here and the screen width and screen height. Make them all float 64s for convenience. So now in order to actually apply this constraint here, it's a bit of wonky math because you have to think about it in a bit of a backwards way than what we're normally thinking of because our camera is now in inverted positions, but we add on that screen width and screen height. And so in order to restrict it from the top left corner, we have to make sure that our offset actually never goes greater than zero because whenever we're moving left, we're actually increasing our camera position. And whenever we're moving up, we're actually increasing our camera position, which is the reverse of what we're used to. Uh, so even though it's a bit of a backwards thing to think about, we need to actually uh, restrict it to zero, zero as the greatest values. To do that, we can use the math library to make it a bit easier. We can say, you know, c.x equals math.min, which will take in the smaller of the two values provided. Now we can say uh, c.x here. And for the other value, we can use just zero. And now we can just copy this line and paste it here for the y value. So say y there and y there and that should constrain us to the top left corner if we go into main go we now have to use this constraint method here and so we can say g.cam dot constrain now for the four arguments here uh to get the tile map width and height in pixels we can use the tile map json so g dot tile map json and here is where those that width and height parameters came in uh, we are, have a slice of layers and the width lives inside of these slices in order to get the width and height of the tile map in pixels uh, we can use the tile map json here so tile map json dot and now we have to go into one of the layers uh, we only use one layer right now so we can just use at zero here and then we can say uh, dot width and multiply that by 16 to get it in pixel form. Same thing uh, for the height. So G dot tile map JSON dot layers at zero dot height multiplied by 16.0. For the screen width and screen height, we can again just pass in that 320 and 240. So now if we run this code, you'll see that we are actually moving around with our camera, but when we hit the top left corner, it stops moving with us. So there you go. Let's go ahead and add the constraints on the other sides of our tile map. So the way we can do that is we can go over here. We can say c.x equals the math.max. And now what we want to do is we want to provide again that c.x. And for our larger value, we want the tile map width in pixels. And we want to actually subtract the screen width here. And for that larger value, we want to take the screen width and we want to subtract the tile map width. Because remember, whenever we move right, the camera is actually going in the negative direction. This will produce us a negative value, assuming the tile map is greater than one screen size. So now let's go ahead and paste that down and replace these with Y and then replace this with screen height and replace this with tile map height in pixels. Now for testing purposes, our map is actually really huge. So it would take us forever to reach the edges. So I'm going to, for now, for the Y axis, I'm just going to replace this with some value. So I'm gonna say like my map is 25 tiles uh, long. And then for the X axis, I'll do the same thing. So I'll say that it is 25 tiles long and we'll replace that when we're actually using this so let's go ahead and run it and now you'll see that as we approach the bottom we will hit the bottom here of course it's not the actual bottom of our tile map but I've kind of simulated that by saying that it can be no you know farther over than 25 tiles so there you go that is our simple tile map camera I'm gonna go ahead and undo those debugging changes and we should be good to go all right so that about concludes our video on cameras bit longer especially because we had to do some refactoring uh, but hopefully you understood and the code will be on github with some more comments to help you out with the process as well and also you can consider joining my discord where there are a lot of active people to help you out with your coding journey including myself also consider supporting me on patreon so i can continue making videos like this thank you very much for watching have a good day see ya